what I would love to um, do, um, it's a little monologue I've written. Um, it's about a very dear relationship I had. It's a very dear person in my life that's no longer here. Um, but yeah, um, that's what I would love to do. If I could please borrow this. Absolutely. All right. Shrouded in clouds of white coats was a flurry of indiscernible groats and grunts. Feet shuffled against a faint and intermittent chatter of voices and clinking metal sounds. It had been the fifth hour and Rose grew wary. She grew wary with each tick of the second hand that came from the gigantic white clock that hung magnificently on the right wall of this white room. Form shifted. They shifted from exit to entrance and then back again as the swing underneath the red lights propelled the twin wooden boards. They fluttered, oscillated, and then came to a halt only to be bothered again. Sweat beads had begun to form on her forehead from the last time the lady in white had wiped it. Her breath grew heavier. And her grip grew even tighter on Michael's arms. There was nothing the people in white could do now because Rose had sworn never to allow a blade to touch her skin. And she had made Michael swear to do the same just in case she wasn't conscious enough to make the call. And so they waited, and they waited, until she dilated. An unusual calm swept across the room, and with it came flickering lights. One more sustained grunt through clenched teeth and a forward thrust of the hips and the cervix succumbed. Silence. I tethered between this place and the space I was before, the one from which I had come, and that which was symbolic, the very one that acted as my rite of passage, dangled as I levitated. Fists clenched, pulled close to my chest, ankles feeble and body supple. The silence, the silence lingered still only to heighten the anxiety in the eyes of the people who looked and were fixed on this red-bodied creature. Rose usually waited. You see, the routine with the first four had been to wait and the high-pitched sound that usually came with the first spoken words would jerk her right back into life. This process had always been one of give and take. She did the heavy lifting and acted as a conveyor, all the while nurturing with intense affection. And the little one's task at this time, of disembarkment, was to reach back down into this spiraling vortex and lend a voice, not necessarily vocalized, but of words nonetheless. And so, with my eyes closed, and with tiny pink lips, I eventually let out the much-awaited proclamation. The thread was cut, and at that point in time, I had forfeited embryonic treasures for the pleasures that resides on this side of the portal. Rose arose, and she beheld she took me closer to her chest, and with floods of salt and water gave me my first shower. She took me closer, and she kissed me. My very first kiss. She was elated, she was excited, for what has been within had been revealed. And what a wonder he was.
I took off all my clothes and laid in the dark that night. My hands were pulled close to my chest. My thighs were pulled close to my elbow and my ankles turned inwards like those of Oedipus. I closed my eyes and there I was, back in the same white room, only this time there were no indistinct chatters and no metal clinks and the huge white clock had come to a stop. The white color turned green and then it turned gray. The lights flickered. They flickered for a while and then went out. Out of the darkness emerged the twilight and underneath the twilight laid Rose. She was motionless for a while and then suddenly propped herself up with the pillow that had acted as a support for her neck. I moved over to her side and I laid beside her. She looked at me, she looked at me with the same intensity she had done the same day so very many years ago. And then she kissed me. It was reminiscent of the very first time that we had met and how our bond was deepened by the love that had grown for the past two decades. I recollected all that we had been through, Rose and I, from exhilarating back rides under scorching sun where I was strapped to her back with a piece of cloth to lullaby musings in rocking cots. I thought about all the time when she had been my first responder, doing better, much, much better than the people in white were ever capable of. I also thought about the time when in my hormone rage teens, she had been my defense in public and a very stern, no mercy prosecutor in private. As I laid beside her, I spoke no words, for what was there to see, dialogue at such levels transcended alphabetical entrapments. And so we laid. And all I needed was the touch of her skin to my skin. And just as she had listened to every single word of my high-pitched monologue when I first arrived, she could understand me perfectly. I took her right hands and I filled the spaces in between her fingers with those of my left hands and locked it. I closed my eyes and I was content being there. I felt a tug and when I opened up my eyes, Rose was gravitating towards the twilight. I did all I could to pull her back down, but my efforts were futile. I shouted, but there were muted sounds, and Rose kept on gravitating. Until I could see her no more. I woke up to find myself still clutched like a child and the space underneath my head drenched with water and my eyes were far from damned. I return to this position any time the pressures of this place becomes exasperating and they always do but the trade that was made long ago, the very trade that had to be made was worth it. I am reborn with each position I take and I'm able to say to those who have not yet come, those who have not yet embarked on this journey, I am able to say to them that I once met a lady and she had the power and the affection to transform a 
little tiny red body creature into a grown man. A man filled with hope and most importantly a man with a perfect understanding of what love is. Looking back, there could have been a way I could have loved her more. There had to be a way I could have loved her more. Thank you very much.